In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I must admit at the outset, I had some trouble with this passage from the gospel today. Oh, the story that you heard is a beautiful story, the story of Jesus coming and being offered a wonderful meal and then anointed by Mary with some very costly perfume. It, it, was, a, it was a great story of, of love and sharing, and, and, and Jesus was with friends. The only problem is when you look at that story and compare it with what is the comparable story with the other gospel writers, then there is something wrong. And I say, where are the women? Or was it women? Was it only Mary? Because you see, the four gospel writers don't put that story together in that same theological way. They differ greatly. In Matthew and Mark, Jesus is anointed on his head. Don't the writers know the difference between the feet and the head? So that seems very, very strange. And how we really liked in this story to see the deceiver come and say what he said because we knew he was a thief, didn't we? Yeah. And so it was really good that he was the one that said, wait a minute, we need to sell this perfume and give it to the poor. wonder how much would have gone to the poor because Judas was stealing. The Scripture says he was. But when you read Matthew and Mark, no mention of Judas. The disciples questioned it in one case, and the crowd in another. Now, wait a minute. This is messing up the story totally. And then the person who is to wash his feet really came about in Luke. Because in a sense, she washed his feet before she put oil on them, the perfume. Really, she bathed her, his feet with her hair. And then she put the perfume on. This, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy. And in that gospel, in the gospel of Luke, she's not named Mary. And Mary is the only time she's named in the gospel of John that you heard read. But it's a woman of great sin. And then, to follow up, there is no mention of the, the selling of the perfume to get money for the poor, since it's because she is a woman of great sin. You know what that means, don't you? It means she's a prostitute. And they don't ask the question because they're always on Jesus about, do you know who touched you? Do you know, do you know this woman who touched you? She is a great, she's a great sinner. Now you've got all of those stories. So you say, where's Mary? And all, Mary was only mentioned in the Gospel of John that you heard today. The other was, it's a woman, and yet the stories are so similar. You have to ask, were there four women at this time who all, always came to worship Jesus, to kneel at His feet, to anoint His feet with perfume? I don't know, but I find it very troubling because I, it's hard for me to focus on one story without the other stories coming in because they are so familiar. So what can I get out of this and what can I share with you about this? Well, one thing we do know about this is that the perfume that was used, and, and we say, oh, my gosh, nard? That, that's the most expensive. Uh, that's, that's, like, that's like a laborer's earnings for a year. Why would anybody do that? It wasn't unusual. Please understand, and Jesus made reference to it in all of the stories 
that this woman came with a perfume that was to be for my uh, body in burial. And the Jews did it big time. The Jews would spare no expense in this ceremony of taking the body and anointing the body with, with all kinds of uh, perfumes. Isn't it true today? I don't know how many funerals I have either presided over or attended. And I have noticed in so many cases Families that really were poor. And close relatives who may not have had enough food to eat. Secured a casket of thousands of dollars. And flowers poured in from people who could not, affect, could not afford flowers. Just to be thrown out. We do the same thing today. We spend money very needlessly on funerals. And sometimes we do it because, because we wish we had done it earlier and we didn't. We wish we had given them their flowers while they were living, but we didn't. Another thing we can notice is that this happened in great turmoil. Jesus was on his last few days before he would be crucified. But his time was not yet come, and he knew that if he let people know exactly where he was, they would just take him and kill him right there. And so he kept moving about. And that's why they paid Judas the money they paid him to know where he was so they could come and arrest him. I thought about that this last week when I I was thinking about the Masters tournament that's coming. And I was thinking how they were hunting down a man that had to be moving about from place to place to place to place so they couldn't find him because they wanted to kill him. A great golfer. They wanted to kill him. He'd won many tournaments. And there wasn't much bad you could say about him, except he had black skin. Oh. So they wanted to kill him. They went, he was the first black man ever to play the Masters. And I don't remember 1975 because I was a broadcaster that year for the Masters. I remember... 1975 is a year that Lee Elder, in spite of the odds, became the first black man to play the Masters. He didn't make the cut. I think if he had made the cut, it probably would have eventually killed him. Why do people like to kill good people? Because they're different from them. That's why Jesus was to be killed. Because he messed up the status quo. Because if we let Jesus live, you might end up worshiping him. And we can't let that happen. And so, they said he must die. Jesus must die. But I really think the important lesson for us, if we can push all of that other stuff away, is the words, or are the words, this could have been given to the poor, talking about the perfume. This could have been sold and given to the poor. And then Jesus said, the poor you have with you always, not me. I won't be around that much long. What he was saying was, the poor will be with you forever. Don't you think 
that this one fell swoop of giving is going to solve that. You're going to be responsible for the poor from now on, as long as you live. The poor will be with you always. Don't think some big gift is going to be all you need to do. Sometimes we, we think about that in our relationship with other people. Maybe one gesture will do it all, but it doesn't. We have a continued responsibility to each other, a continuing need to serve one another. But then understand the reason that Mary anointed the feet of Jesus because she knew that you can't play with time. You can't play with time in serving other people and you can't play with time in serving each other. I've known so many people who at a funeral would say, I wish I'd done it. I wish I had made that phone call. We've been apart so many years. I wish I had made that phone call. It's too late now. I can't call them. But I wish I did. I was waiting for them to say I'm sorry. And I asked one couple that. What, what, what is taking you away from this member of your family? Why are you why you're not connected anymore? And she said, I don't remember. I don't remember. But we get disconnected from each other and we get disconnected even from the people that we love and care for because we wait. The women didn't wait or Mary didn't wait or whoever was in that story didn't wait. Took the perfume and said, we've got to do it now. And it's good they did, because there wasn't another opportunity. There wasn't another opportunity to honor that person they loved. And in many cases today, there's not going to be another opportunity. And you know, you know, don't you? You know when you go home, don't you? You know you should pick up that telephone and you should make that call. Show me, Jesus was saying, show me your love now. Yes, show me. Like the song of the little flower girl in Lerner and Lowe's, My Fair Lady, who says, to Professor Henry Higgins, show me, show me now. That's the message to us today. Oh, you know, you, you, you know, and you should do it. You should do it. And you should do it now. Amen.